Pastor Patience, the author of the book Jesus' Africa that we have gathered here to launch, this woman is a woman of great vision who has put together a work of divine wisdom with razor sharp and unwavering passion. Our daughter, we are proud of you. There is nothing Africa lacks. From human to mineral resources, this same wealth and riches has enriched the whole world, but never has it benefited our children and the generations that have been. And that is why it is a cry to a mother, to the fathers, that this time you free our children and liberate them from slavery, from the mindset that they must go and ask for visas and cry for them, pray for them. When we have a rich heritage, when we have gold, we have diamond, we have silver, we have copper, we have everything that the whole world is coming to Africa to look for this and as we are going to where it is being taken. Let us dive into the heart of Africa, guided by the insights, insightful words of Pastor Patience. Let us together witness the dawn in Jesus Africa. Thank you very much and God bless you. Now that some of you are coming up, to see that the problem we have is the problem of the, of, of, of the Edomite caste. That's what patience is going in. Esau, Esau, his children became the Edomites in the Bible. So, to, def, to, to remove that curse of selling the birthright, that's the problem. Otherwise, Africa, we, we have everything. When some people say we shall cut off aid, we say, what aid are you going to We don't need aid. We have everything here. Yeah. I think for the parents, it is also important to note that you do your best for the children. You may not know that they are picking much of what you are telling them, but in the end, you may be surprised. They may be picking the, the, a, a, a lot of what you are telling them. Even Mr. Kabuta was surprised. He, he, he used to think that I was playing, playing football, not caring about what they were doing. But when I grew up and I started doing things, he said, how did you remember this? He didn't know that I was, I was studying whatever was happening. I thank Jesus, my Yeshua, because this is his story. His name is on the book title because it is his story. The vision, the call, the purpose, the glory, the honor, the praise, all belong to him. It is 500 years since the last reformation. My prayer is that he will use Jesus' Africa to ignite a new reformation in Africa. The book, Jesus' Africa, is a spiritual journey on three planes. The first is my own personal testimony of encountering Jesus as a young child and how hearing his voice and knowing him as Lord and Savior is the single greatest driving force in my life. I share my many struggles in my walk with God to submit to his will in trust and obedience. The voice and God's will from my life has always led me to the right path, but this path is seldom easy, comfortable, or convenient. To obey his will requires that you die to your old self and desires in order to truly live for Christ. This is the path that led me to answering the call to be a pastor. Paul put it this way in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. For whatever former things I had that might have been gains to me, I have come to consider them as loss for Christ's sake. Yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss 
compared to the possession of the priceless privilege of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. For his sake, I have lost everything and count it all as mere rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. The second plane is the revelation that I started receiving from God in 2005, when I saw a vision of God's redemptive purpose for Africa. I heard God's voice say, out of what was called darkness will come a great light, and that this light would come from within us. I discovered that the vision that Uganda is the heart of Africa, and that as Uganda aligns with God's redemptive purpose, it will have a domino effect in the rest of Africa. That was the beginning of the revelation. And over the last 17 years, the revelation has continued to grow. Like an onion, each revelation from God opens the door to the next, always going deeper and deeper into the counsel of God. God started revealing that we cannot move forward as a continent without dealing with the spiritual roots of two of the seminal events in African history, slavery and colonialism. This surprised me because I thought these were tragic historical events better left in the past. But God showed me that the roots were in the past, but the fruits were still present with us today, and that unless we dealt with those roots, we would never experience true freedom, whether here in Africa or the diaspora. The book details this journey of discovery. I am amazed to see how God has continued to reveal and confirm his word over the years. The final plane that God revealed is the role of the church. And by the church, I mean all Christians. In God's plan to redeem nations, and in particular, the role of the African church, God showed me that the church is central to God's redemptive plan. And it is only when the church understands her role and has a paradigm shift that she will be used mightily of God to disciple nations. The book challenges the church to arise and take her place, to see the nation cross over into her destiny. I believe that it is time for Africa to enter our spiritual promised land. God told me to sound the trumpet of his word. And the book, Jesus is Africa, is one of the ways that I'm doing that. I pray that all who hear the sound of the trumpet will arise and start taking their own steps to possess their inheritance. My prayer is that we will see the fulfillment of the word of God and that the image of Jesus will be reflected in all of us and in our nations. That is when we will become Jesus' Africa. Thank you.